asset forfeiture. We do reports on these things, and we do it with all all with your support. We could do more if we reach this uh, $1 million on the money bomb. So, all right, well, I've got one more question, uh, right. one more uh, tweet up. And it's kind of funny because this is one thing that everyone's always curious about, about Alex Jones, and this comes from Ad Intuitive News. Does real Alex Jones get really crazy off camera as he does on camera? <laughs> Hashtag Money Bomb 2015. He's a real I'm sure laid do. back guy. You can answer that. No, no. <laughs> Alex is a very laid back guy. You know, he gets off. No, actually, he's completely <laughs> opposite. The, he is exactly the way you see he him yeah. on the air. He wears his emotions <laughs> on his sleeve uh, 24 hours a day. Yeah. Um, he can be real serious. Been, he can be over the top. And, and let me like tell you, let on, me uh, tell you how it is. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll give you the straight up. You know, there have been weekends where I get these 8 a.m. phone calls, Saturday morning, 8 a.m. phone call for something that went up on the YouTube site or an article, he can't get a hold of somebody. So he's, I don't know if I'm the first person or the third person he's called, but if I'm there, I answer it. Hey, what's up, Alex? Why is it, you know, it's a typo. It could be something small, but he sees it and he's really into this information and he's really into the way we present it. He's, yeah. you know, if a camera doesn't look right, he catches it. He really does have that amazing attention for detail that not every that I've never seen anybody else have. Plus his memory, I mean, he can yeah. recall. Yeah. Facts and I and remember like when that. we were fighting uh, the uh, Sandy Hook uh, gun control movement that was going on with all that. I remember him skipping break after break after break. He's not in it simply for the money. The yeah. money has to be there as a means to do what we need to do. But that's not the end goal. The end goal is to warn people about what's going on. We're concerned for our families. Yeah. You need to be concerned for yours. You stand with us to warn people. And that's what this is about. We all have to warn each other, just as if we were seeing a wildfire the approaching the town. And I, I want to say something to people who may be woken up like it's years ago. Up. They listened to Alex years ago, and, and they're like, well, I'm awake. I'm awake. I'm, I'm awake. I think back, so it's a little white one. You guys have Joe coming into my ear. I don't know if he's trying to talk to me or not. But people have woken up, are, and they're like, oh, I'm awake. I know what's going on. Well, you know, there's a lot of other people out there who aren't awake, and we need to wake up others. That's our That's job right. is to wake up other people, That's right. because if you're awake, you can wake up 10 other people, and then those 10 people can wake up 10 people, and then those 10 people can wake up 10 people. And you never know, there's another Alex Jones out there. There, mm -hmm. You know, there's all types of people out there that could contribute in one way or another, the whistleblowers. It's you never know who you're going to reach. And I pass keep out, going back to out. this fire analogy. You know, yeah. when we were out there, we saw massive camps, people, firefighters who had come from all over the country come there to fight those fires people putting up signs thank you so much for coming here and doing this uh, living out of pup tents to, to fight a fire mm -hmm. that's what we have to do we have to be the front guard for this for the people who haven't woke up we have to warn people of what's coming we have to try to stop it ourselves just as we tried to stop the the beginning of the uh, Syrian war a year or two ago when they were doing the false uh, sarin flags we try to stop it we try to wake people up that's what you do with us as well. Yeah. You support us, you stand with us, you spread the information that we help to put together, that we collect from you, from other sources, to put this out there to let people know what's going on. That's what it's about. We're yelling at people, we're saying the fire is coming, and a lot of people don't hear us yet. We need a bigger megaphone, that's what this is about. It's trying to get this onto the satellite, trying to reach 400 million people with a million dollars. Yeah, and it, it, it can be done, and it, but it can only be done with your help. So, that's right. Uh, I'll give out the number again, 1-888-253-3139, or you can go to infowars.com forward slash money bomb. You could donate through your computer, or you could call in, talk to one of the operators. I spent three hours in there earlier today doing it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, also, we're going to have a call-in line if people want to call in. I, I think we're going to get this uh, debate going here soon. Guys, what's the status on the debate right now? Is that kicked off, or are, are they actually talking? Well, right. I mean, let's we should, go to we the debate. Get that going. Let's find out what's going yeah. on because it's going to be interesting. with incredible, iconic assets. Uh, one of the really, truly great real estate businesses. And I may be an entertainer because I've had tremendous success with number one bestsellers all over the place with The Apprentice and everything else I've done. But I will tell you this, what I am far and away greater than an entertainer is a businessman. And that's the kind of mindset this country needs to bring it back. Because we owe 19 trillion right now, 19 trillion dollars. And you need this kind of thing. Now we're here with analysis and commentary. Let right. me comment on that right there. Yeah. Because we've heard this before. For a long time, there's been organizations about citizens against government waste and everything. Look, we know that there's a lot of mismanagement. We know there's a lot of waste. That's not the fundamental problem. It isn't blowback, it isn't mistakes have been made. The fundamental problem is the goals of government. It's not that it's not being managed well enough, it's that they're doing the wrong thing. They're not constrained by the law. We need to have people who understand what the Constitution is. 
the uh, guy on Twitter that we were responding to earlier asked, what can we do as individuals? I think we need to organize by issue by issue. We need to get involved at the local level and we need to organize on issue levels. And that's one of the things that Gerald Salenti is doing with Occupy Peace. But we need to do that in terms of dragnet surveillance. We need to start organizations that are issue by issue because we're not gonna find politicians for the most part who are even addressing any of these issues. Exactly. And, and right now, what do we have? Instead of talking about the issues, they're tit for tatting. Yeah. They're going to debate which governor created the most jobs or who yeah. can create the most jobs. The government shouldn't be creating jobs. It ought to get out of the way. That's what we believe at the, as the freedom position, the libertarian position, if you will. And let's, let's listen to what they're saying. I want to give Mr. Trump. But Jake, Mr. This, Mr. This Trump, is, I want to give you another chance, Mr. Trump. I want to give you a chance to respond to something that your rival to your left, Governor Bush, said. Governor Bush told me last week when I read him the quote from Governor Jindal that he agrees you're not a serious candidate. Tell Governor Bush why you are a serious candidate and what <laughs> your kind of That's what we're talking Turn about. to the fellow on yeah. your left, exactly children. Politics yeah. all yeah. my life, <laughs> although I've been on that side as opposed to this side. I've now a politician for about three months. Obviously, I'm doing pretty well. I'm number one in every polls by a lot. But <laughs> the qualification is that I've dealt with people all over the world, been successful all over the world. Everything I've done virtually has been a tremendous success. When markets changed, when things turned, I heard uh, Governor Pataki, who, by the way, was a failed governor in New York, a very seriously yeah. failed. He wouldn't be elected dog catcher right now. I heard what he had to say. <laughs> and I will tell you this, uh, Atlantic ridiculous. City, I made a tremendous amount of money in Atlantic City. I left seven years ago. I've gotten great credit for my timing. And that's what I'm all about. I'm a businessman, did really well, really well. And Jeb, what I want to do is put that ability into this country to make our country rich again. Well, let's and not I talk about that, any issues. Sure yeah, you know. let's not talk about issues. It's all about him. And you know, this is one of the things that he does. Yeah. That somebody pointed out. Uh, I, I believe it's the guy that did the Dilbert cartoons. He, he said one of the things that Donald Trump does when he brags about himself. We look at this and we go, we're, we're laughing because he says, "I'm great. I'm number one. I, I did this. I did that." Part of the strategy is is that you hear that in your conscious mind says, "Come on, this isn't real. This isn't serious." So kind of quasi laughing about this, and we're saying. Yeah, he's bragging about this, but your subconscious hears success, 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 success. I did this, I did. And, and so it is coming in subconsciously. This is a guy that knows he's an expert at closing a deal. He's working subtly with the American people to, to close, close the this deal. deal. He's American closed this people. deal, and he's selling you a used car that's had sugar put in the tank. I'm I'm I just told him not to lower the volume so much, yeah. so we can have just yeah, in case something here. happens. That's uh, interesting. I know. I know people out there really want to see this. To yeah. me, it's it's laughable. I mean, this is a production. What you're looking at right yeah. now. We don't know to keep the the wool over the American. It is celebrity, big bro. Actually, get the job done. And you talked about business. Well, in Wisconsin. You, you excuse me. me. No, 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 we talk about in this. Wisconsin. <laughs> you're losing two point two billion dollars. Walker's going right to right talk now. about unions right now. So yeah, unions that's his one talking point. Unions, unions, unions. The Democrats. And as we all know, that failed three times in four and a half years when I got elected because it is working. We balanced the budget. You want to talk about balanced budgets? You took four major projects into bankruptcy over and over and over again. You can't take America into bankruptcy. That's what's wrong well, with the bankruptcy. Well, I think it's in bankruptcy. We're in bankruptcy. Maybe we need Donald Trump to uh, bluff yeah, the uh, creditors. I don't know. I never went bankrupt, by the way. <laughs> as you know, everybody knows. But uh, we out of hundreds of companies, hundreds of deals, I've used the law four times, made a tremendous thing. I'm in business. I, may, I did a very good job. But I will say this, and people are very, very impressed with what I've done, the business people. But when very the folks impressed. of Iowa found out the true facts of the job you know, one thing, you've Trump, done in Wisconsin, Trump didn't have a daddy who got him everything. <laughs> you look at Jeb Bush. All I think well, is, he had a daddy this is what that, my daddy got no, me everything. Actually, he had a daddy that was pretty well connected yeah. in New York and already uh, and, and, and was very uh, very wealthy there. And their connections, listen, this is how Donald Trump got his money. And don't believe me, go back and look at the articles that were written 20 years ago uh, with what he was doing in New York. Uh, it was very well covered by Vanity Fair, by Spy Magazine, by others. They went through, they documented it in detail as to how he got his money. And basically, he says, I never declared bankruptcy, but his companies did. What he would do is he would acquire these companies at a very high price. He would restructure the debt into something that couldn't be sustained, pay himself a very large fee and distance himself from it. Then he would hardball the banks who had bought into that. That's basically the Trump business plan. It's like a hostile takeover where the, uh, the people in the 1980s would take over the companies, then they would sell off the parts and pay themselves a very large amount of money. 
That's essentially what we're looking at with the uh, the Trump success story. Do yourself a favor and don't buy into personalities. You need to look at issues. I can't repeat this enough. They're talking about how people are buying into the issues just like they did with Obama. I hate to see that happening on the right. Let's listen to what they have to say. Across this country, they want to know what we're going to do to fix this place. How we're going to balance a budget, how we're going to create more economic growth, how we're going to pay down the debt, what we're going to do to strengthen the military. So we've just spent. We have a lot here. of issues coming well, up. But wait sir. a minute, with a lot of an hominem. Now I know that you, it may be buzzing out there, but I think it's important we get to the issues because that's we what are the people the issues, want, sir. and Thank they don't you. want all this fighting. Well, a phenomenon going on in this race is that the political outsiders in the race, Dr. Carson, Donald Trump, Carly Fiorina, all together have majority support in the polls. Governor Christie, I want to ask you about something that Dr. Carson said the other day. Dr. Carson said campaigning is easier for him because he's not a politician. He can just tell the truth, therefore, while politicians, quote, have their finger in the air to see and do what is politically expedient. Governor Christie, tell Dr. Carson, is that a fair description of you? Well, I know Ben doesn't think that about me. I'm sure he was talking about one of the other guys, not me. <laughs> <laughs> and as far as being an outsider is concerned, as far as being an outsider is concerned, let me tell you this, Jake. I am a Republican in New Jersey. I wake up every morning as an outsider. I wake up every morning with a Democratic legislature who's trying to beat my head in and fight me because I'm trying to bring conservative change to a state that needed it desperately. And so everyone can talk up here about their credentials, but the bottom line is every morning I get up, I vetoed 400 bills from a crazy liberal Democratic legislature. Not one of them has been overridden. I vetoed more tax increases than any governor in American history history, according to Americans for Tax Reform. What folks want in this country is somebody to go down there and get the job done. And that's exactly what I'll do. So I know this much, that what the American people want to hire right now is somebody who believes in them and believes that they are the ones who can fix our country. I will be the vessel through which they can fix this country. But it's not about me. It's about all of you and getting this government off your back and out of your way and letting you succeed. So I know that Ben wasn't talking well, about me. Out. Look at Thank him you. smiling at me right now. I know Ben didn't mean it about Thank me. Thank you, Governor Christie. One Dr. of these other guys, I'm Dr. sure. Dr. Carson, who were you thinking about on the stage when you said that? <laughs> and Be honest, Ben. And Be more honest. broadly, is experience in government not important for a president to have? Typically, politicians do things that are politically expedient and they are looking for whatever their particular goal is. That is not the reason that I have gotten into this thing. I am extraordinarily concerned about the direction of this country, the divisiveness that is going on, the fiscal irresponsibility, the failure to take a leadership position in the world. All of those things will lead to a situation where the next generation will not have a chance that we've had now. So the problem I, I have with Carson is he doesn't uh, seem to understand the basic principles of individual liberty. And he comes across as one of the run-of-the-mill conservatives. If you look at the, the issues on his website, he's got things like a balanced budget amendment, protecting life, education, Obamacare, keep faith in our society. But he has things like keep Gitmo open, Russia, and lessons learned. He says Putin is dangerous. The United States is being dangerous and belligerent. That is very dangerous, I think, in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Fish swims in water, it doesn't know it's water. It's not that politicians are bad people, it's that they've been in that system for Ever. The truth is 75% of the American people think the government is corrupt. 82% of the American people think these problems that have The government festered. will be corrupt if you don't have a rule of law. In some cases, 25 The government will be corrupt if they don't understand that the purpose of government is to enforce individual liberty, not to promise a security that it never delivers. For health care. Mm -hmm. These things have gone on for so long because no I really wish they would address why people the think that quo. the government is corrupt. People know the government can be corrupted solve yeah. problems that have festered for a long time and they produce results that is what my whole life has been about people know this is about far more than replacing if she wants to talk about results we need to understand that hewlett packard stock tank about the same as greek bank stocks this last three months 50 percent off under her leadership. So she did for Hewlett Packard what uh, the monetary crisis did for Greek banks. That's her claim to fame. By wealthy donors. Mr. Trump has repeatedly said that the $100 million you've raised for your campaign makes you a puppet 
for your donors. Are you? No, absolutely not. Oh, no. People are supporting me. Because